For the next couple of days, we're going to be learning about different book illustrators. Now, a book illustrator is someone who makes the pictures for a picture book. The illustrator that we are going to learn about today is named Eric Carl. Eric Carl is an author and illustrator. That means that he writes his own books and he makes the pictures for them. I bet you might know some of his books. He's, his most famous book is The Very Hungry Caterpillar. That's his most famous one. But he's also made books like One, Two, Three, To the Zoo, and a bunch of other ones. Eric Carl makes his illustrations by using collage. That means that Eric Carl paints a bunch of pieces of paper with different colors and different textures. Then he cuts shapes out of those pieces of paper and he glues those different shapes together to make it look like people or animals or fruit. Um, and he doesn't use any computers. He does all of it by hand, using just his hands, scissors, and glue. No computers. Eric Carl was born in America, but his parents were both from Germany, so they moved back to Germany when Eric Carl was six years old. When Eric Carl was a grown-up, he moved back to America, but it was his art teachers that he had when he was in Germany that helped him learn to love painting and learn to love art. Eric Carl is still alive today and he is still making art and still making books. So in honor of the author and illustrator, Eric Carl, we are going to learn how to draw a caterpillar and a watermelon. Okay, let's draw our watermelon slice. Okay, let's draw our watermelon slice and our caterpillar. First for our caterpillar, we're gonna put his head in the middle of our paper and we're gonna do a small circle. And if you want to use a tracer like a small water bottle lid or I think a marker cap might be too small, but something a little bigger than that you can. But a lot of Eric Carl stuff was not made with perfect circles, so it's okay if yours is a little wobbly. So I'm just going to freehand mine, which means not use a tracer. So I'm making it kind of an ovally circle. Now, the hungry caterpillar has oval eyes, and inside his oval eyes, he has another skinny oval. And remember, if I'm ever going too fast, you just Pause and rewind. Now the hungry caterpillar has a little nose and it's not a perfect circle ever. Anytime you see the pictures, his nose is not a perfect circle. And then sometimes he has a mouth and sometimes he doesn't, depending on what page you're looking at. Because if his mouth is closed, he kind of just makes the mouth disappear. Now for his antenna, they are long skinny upside down raindrops. So it starts here, goes up, around, and then back to the point. Up, around, and back to the point. Make sure it's really skinny. If you don't get it to a point down at the bottom, it'll look like a bunny. Now for the calipeter, Pillar. I'm struggling saying it myself. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Oh my goodness. For the caterpillar's body, we are going to start here and make a backward C shape going up, around, down, and back around to touch here. Up, around, down, and back up. Backwards C. And we're going to do a bunch of those and you can make yours look like your caterpillar is going up and down, like on the cover of the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Or you can have yours just going straight. So what I did there is I went up, around, and then I ended up touching here. So if I start on the top, go around, and I touch on the side, it's going to make his little body segments go up. And then we can later make them go down. So now I'm going to start on the side and end on the side. Now I'm going to start on the side 
and end on the bottom to make it look like his body segments are going down. Now for the last one, his last one is always smaller than the rest, just like that. Now we're going to do four feet on the front and two feet on the back. And for his feet, they always look like little triangles. One, two, three, four. And then two on the back. One, two. Now for our watermelon. We're gonna do a big curve, because we're just doing a watermelon slice. Then we want these two sides to go together and make a point. So I'm gonna draw a little dot, and that's the point that I'm aiming at. So I'm gonna start here, and I'm aiming towards that dot. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And I'm aiming towards that dot. Oh, I missed it a little bit, but that's okay. I'm the artist and I can fix it. Just boop, fixed. Now on our watermelon, we're gonna do a thick stripe and then a thin stripe. So a thick stripe and then a thin stripe. These are for the different colors on a watermelon because you have the dark green edge and then you have a light green before it turns to red. Now we're going to do a big circle like the caterpillar just ate his way through that spot on the watermelon. And you want it to be about the same size as his head so it looks like he could have fit through that hole. Now for the seeds, the seeds look like raindrops. So we start pointy at the top and then we go around and back up. We're gonna do a couple of these. There, and that is our hungry caterpillar and a watermelon. Now we get to color it in. Okay, boys and girls, I had a lot of fun making my own Very Hungry Caterpillar and Watermelon Slice, and I hope you did too. I can't wait to see the pictures that you turn in.